Congo, the DRC, how far is that place? How far is that land? But as Peter said, it's not that far. It's right here. It's about us all. It's about people engaging with people. And that too means a lot to me because Africa holds a very special place in my heart. And because I do believe in global solidarity, I do believe that we can work together and really go beyond borders and speak the same language. Four years ago, when I um, was Governor General of Canada, I had the privilege of um, leading a high-level diplomatic mission to West Africa, including the DRC, a state visit, as it is known in diplomatic jargon. And what I discovered was a nation of startling contrasts. On one hand, the DRC is a land of breathtaking beauty and wonderful, very vibrant, hardworking people. And on the other hand, it was a theater of a bloody conflict that has consumed seven million lives. Seven million lives since 1998. Do we hear enough about that? No. no. While fighting is largely waged over control of the country's vast reserves of diamonds and other precious minerals and metals, that conflict has had the unexpected consequence of seeing an estimated Two million women and girls raped over the last decade. Sadly and tragically dubbed the rape capital of the world, the Democratic Republic of Congo is considered for serious reasons the worst place on the globe to be a woman. That's hard. You know, I, I spent a decade in Canada working directly with women victims and survivors of violence, building a national network of shelters for these women and their children. So undertaking a state visit to the DRC was quite troubling. Troubling because I, w I was about to set foot in a region and a country in which violence against women, and more specifically rape, is turned into a full-blown weapon of war, a weapon of terror, a weapon of ethnic cleansing. Is it specific to Africa? No. History keeps repeating itself. From one war to another over the history of humanity, women's bodies have been the battleground of armed conflicts and still are in the 21st century. I was not in the DRC to teach lessons. I was there to put the full weight of Canadian diplomacy behind Congolese women's actions for justice, 
for respect, for equality, for democracy, and for the rule of law. And the National Assembly was just the beginning. For my next objective was to give a voice to the often silenced survivors of sexualized violence. So I brought the Canadian delegation accompanying me into Congo's troubled and resource-rich region of the Great Lakes. It is there that the bulk of the armed conflict is being waged. And in the town of Goma, province of North Kivu, for example, I convened local women who shared with me horrifying tales of militiamen-led gang rapes, which even took place in front of terrified children, husbands, and siblings. The stories were unbearable. Return. 